In this Kotlin on Android tutorial, we're going to be adding navigation buttons to our web view and also we'll include a progress status bar. Welcome to mobile application tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, this we'll just go to my website here at and you'll notice that I've got a little uh, indication here there's a little video showing you how to get the code and in this particular case the code will also include icon bars forward and back icon bars just to save you the um, initial uh, tr trouble of including those in your file manager but I don't have those buttons so I'm going to have to do this manually so I'm on a Mac I'm just going to go to my file manager and I need to add my icons inside the drawable folder here. Okay, so I've got the material icons library here. Um, I've just filtered that, but I want to add two arrows. They're going to be basically the back white arrow, so I can add that to my drawable folder. And I also want the IC arrow forward. And it'll also be white. This is the one here. So I'm just going to drag this into my drawable folder as well. So I've gone into my drawable folder. There are my two icons. So that's all I need to do in my file manager. Now we'll go into the Android Studio itself. And the first thing I need to do is I want to actually associate those icons inside our um, act, uh, inside our browser toolbar which is what we did in the previous tutorial so if we go to our browser toolbar here let's increase the screen size here I'm going to add a couple of image views here to represent the forward and the back icons so it'll be an image view and the width in this particular case is I'm going to set a uh, layout weight for that so I'm just going to make that 0 dp and above that I'm just going to add the layout weight here and I'm just going to set the layout weight to 0.15 nice and small now for the edit text I also want to add a layout weight there as well because these icons are just going to appear next to our um, input form basically. So above the layout weight I'll also add above the layout width I'll add the layout weight and I'm going to make this point 0.7 for 70% of the uh, width there and I need to change the width down there as well to 0 d P0 pixels. Okay, if we go back into the height now, height, I'm just going to wrap the content there. And I need to give this an ID. I'll just call this back button. And of course, I need to add the icon as well. This will be Android. Yes. Source. And this particular case, we're going to select the arrow back button there. Okay, we want to add the same thing for the um, forward button. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And change the ID to forward. And we'll also need to change the um, icon name as well. Okay, these should be the only changes we need to make to our browser toolbar layout file. Now we want to add a progress bar as well. The progress bar is going to fit underneath our toolbar. So we'll do that inside our main layout file. And I'll put it above the web view for the progress bar. 
and the progress bar is going to match the parent and I'll wrap the content for that. And I need an ID for the progress bar. And that ID is this, I'll just call it page. Page load progress bar. And I also need a style for that as well. And it's, we're going to set the style to horizontal, which will suit this particular case. And we also want to make the progress bar invisible. In other words, we only want to have the progress bar loading when we're loading our page. So if we go to Android, visibility equals, what was it set as gone? Okay, so these are the only changes we need to make to our layout files. Now we'll go into our source code. Inside here, I'm going to create a new function. This function is just going to note us when the page starts loading or the page completes loading. So I'll call this function, let's call it page load status. And what I want to do here is I want to create a object for our web view client and that's going to have a couple of overridden methods we can use, overridden functions we can use which will indicate when the page has started loading and completed loading. Okay so we call our web view and down here we have a web view client, we need to set that. And basically we can set up an object for that. With the web view client. And let's put some curly brackets in there. Okay, so we've created a basically an object representing the web view client. And from here we can access we can override the methods there and already one selected for me on page finished so I want that and if I, I also want on page started there's a bunch of other functions we can override but for what we want here we're just going to use those two select OK OK so let's go to on page started first so on page started, we can we want to display our progress bar. So I need to go back to see what we called our progress bar. So our progress bar, the ID is page load progress bar. There it is there. We call progress. Select visibility. And it's equal view dot visible. I'll auto complete that. Also, when we're loading the page, uh, the uh, a page for the first time, I want to set the progress as zero, just resetting it. So we'll call page load progress bar again, and it provides us with the progress member. And we're just going to set reset that to zero. Those should be the only changes we need to make on page start. Let's go to on page finished. And once the page is finished, we can just remove the progress indicator, progress bar indicator. So we'll call page load progress bar. Visibility. And we'll set that to view.gone. And I'm also going to create another function underneath this one. We'll just put it above it just so we can center it in the screen a bit easier. So this one I'm going to call update progress. So this is that one where we actually keep updating the progress bar so the progress bar keeps increasing or traversing across the page indicating the loading status of the page. So we'll call that update progress. Uh, 
Okay, so we're going to call a web view client this time, but in this case, it's going to be the web Chrome client. So that's going to provide a uh, basically a school callback function with an update to that. So again, we need to set up an object to represent that class. It's like a Java anonymous in a class. And that was going to be a web Chrome client. And again, we're going to override a method there. And I want to find something on. Well, this is taking a little on progress changed. So this is the one I want here. Okay, so this will give us the new. This will keep getting called every time the progress it gets updated with a new value. So it's just a matter of us calling our progress bar, page load progress bar. Calling progress with the new progress value. Okay, we've got those two methods there. Now let's jump into our load web page here. Now in here we create a uh, web view client object and that's so we can keep all the browsing happening with inside our web view and not jumping into an external activity. So but we've, now we've created the page load status down here, we create a web view client. So we don't need these two lines. So we can remove them. And now it's just a matter of calling the page load status and the update progress. Page load status and update progress. When we're loading a web page just to implement that. Okay, finally, we've got navigation, but we've updated the progress, which is good, but we also want to navigate. We want to set up our forward and back buttons. So if we go into the on create function here and we'll add on click listeners for those buttons. And I do need to go back into our browser toolbar to see the IDs back button, forward button. That's easy to remember. Okay, so we'll go to the back button first. And we need to set an on click listener first. Uh, we'll use the Kotlin one provided to us. And now we can actually use the web view to listen for the status. So if can go back. So if we can go back, the web view will note, will save its own sort of internal sort of state of the pages it's navigating. So it will inform us. And if can go back, we can actually just call the web view, go back. And that's all we need to do. The web view is really helping us out here. So we'll do the same for forward button. First of all, set the on click listener. And it's exactly the same as what we did above. Web view um, can go forward this time. So if we can go forward, web view go forward. Oh. Okay, so basically we've implemented our um, history buttons, our forward and back buttons, and we've got a progress indicator indicating us the loading state of a particular web page. So next step is we'll go ahead and run this. Okay, so there we have the uh, default text for my website there. On the bottom right hand corner there, I'm just going to click send. And if you look, you'll see the status bar moving and the page has been loaded. So if I, I'll click on the YouTube videos there. And you can, this is demonstrating the status bar showing. If we go into Kotlin. And we can see the Kotlin tutorials. If we click the back button, uh, we go back out and we've got the forward button, it takes us to where we were before. And as we normally do in these tutorials, we're going to step through the code changes we made by putting in some breakpoints. So we'll put one for the page load status for when the page is finished. 
and we'll put one for when play just started. We'll put in one for when we're getting updated with the progress state changes. We'll put in one for each of these, just indicating when we're loading this page status and updating the progress. And we'll put in a couple for our button on click listeners as well. Now we'll run that in debug mode. Page is now loaded. I can click the send button with the default text. Okay, so we're setting up our page load status. So we'll continue on. And we're also setting up the update page progress. So I can remove those two breakpoints. Okay, so already the update progress is called back with 10% of the page being loaded. I'm going to remove that breakpoint because that's continually going to get called with updates. Okay, basically we're removing the view here. So this is being called as the page is finished. Um, this is probably part of the internal state logic to it because we actually haven't yet hit the on page started yet. But never mind, we'll continue on. Okay, now we're loading the page and what we're going to do here is make the progress bar visible. And I'm setting the progress here as zero because we're just starting the page there. We'll continue on. Okay, it's now telling me that the page has finished loading. So we're going to remove the progress bar. And the application's still running. So I can see that now the page is fully loaded. So I'm going to click on a link here and we'll just check our button listeners. And we're loading a page here because we're load, loading a new page because I clicked on a website link. And we'll, con so this, and we'll continue on. That page is now completed loading. Okay, so that worked fine. Now, look, watch what happens if I click the back button. We now have our on click listener. Can we go back? And we can. And it's updating us with, I'll remove these two now. It's updating us with the page load statuses and the progresses. I think you get the idea for that one. Now let's check our forward button, history button, click that. And as you can see, can we go forward? If we can, we'll execute the web go view go forward and we've gone back to the forward page there. So that just demonstrates that our on, but on forward and on back history buttons do work successfully. And we just gave an example of stepping through the progress code and the page completed and page started status updates. So that concludes the Kotlin on Android web view browser tutorial. In this tutorial we just learnt how we can monitor the state changes for when a play page starts loading and when it completes loading and how we can implement changes for that. And in this example we were basically displaying a progress bar and then removing the progress bar once the page had completely displayed. And talking about progress bars, we did implement a progress bar in this and we did use the WebView Chrome client to do that because that provides us a callback of the progress states, the page loading progress states. We use that to incrementally basically animate our progress bar for when the web page was loading. And finally, we implemented some navigation buttons, forward and back navigation buttons, using the functionality built in the web view itself, which does maintain an internal history. So we just utilized that and allowed us for our web, web browser to navigate forward and back in the web view buttons. And that concludes this tutorial. If you enjoy my tutorials and want to get notified of the other tutorials I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. Thank you for taking the time to watch this one. Bye for now.